title of the first section today, find the inverse of points. Definition for the section, to find the inverse, switch x and y. So if we have a point, we can switch the x and the y to find the inverse. First question and only question for the section. 2 comma 6, next point 4 comma 5, and last point negative 3 comma negative 1. Taking these three points, we can find the inverse by switching the x and the y. So the first point 2 comma 6, the inverse by switching them around would be 6 comma 2. The second point, 5 comma 4, and the last point, negative 1 comma negative 3. So to find the inverse, the x and the y will switch, and the three points for the inverse, 6 comma 2, 5 comma 4, and negative 1 comma negative 3. The title of the next section is find the inverse of functions. In this section we'll find the inverse of functions, two definitions or two steps. The first step, switch x and y. And the second step, solve for y. So the same as the points, if we have a function, we can first switch the x and the y. And to have our final answer in y equals form, we can solve for y. First question, y equals negative 2x minus 1. To find the inverse again, the variable x and y we can switch. So instead of y equals, we'll put a x in for y, so x equals negative 2. And instead of x, we can replace it with y minus 1. So we have x equals negative 2y minus 1. To write the inverse in y equals form, we can solve for y. To solve for y, we can add 1 on both sides. So we'll have x plus 1 equals negative 2y. And last step, we can divide both sides by negative 2. And if we rewrite our answer in y equals form, we'll have y equals. We can have a negative outside the fraction and x plus 1 over 2. So the inverse is y equals negative x plus 1 over 2. To write this in proper notation as an inverse, since y was originally equal to negative 2x minus 1, instead of the final answer being y, this will be the inverse of y, which we can write as a negative 1 exponent. So y to the negative first power is the inverse of y equals negative x plus 1 over 2. Second question, and last question for this section. f of x equals x minus 5. Instead of a y for the function, we can have f of x equals. To find the inverse, we can first take f of x and replace that with y, since the function of x is similar to being the y value. If we write this as y equals x minus 5, it's the same function, and now we can take the inverse. Switching the x and the y again, we'll have x equals y minus 5. And last step, we want to solve for y. We can add 5 on both sides. And if we write the y on the left-hand side, we'll have y equals x plus 5. 
to write this in proper notation, since we started with f of x, we want our answer to be in f of x form. So we can put f, and adding a negative 1 exponent would be the inverse of f. So f to the negative 1 of x equals our answer, which is x plus 5. So our final answer, the inverse of f, is equal to x plus 5. The title of the last section today is Determine. If the pair of functions are inverses. In this section we'll have two functions, and we'll determine if both functions are inverses of each other. The definition for the section, inverses, if f composition g of x is equal to x, and if g composition of f of x is also equal to x. So for the section, if you take both compositions of the two functions, if they're both equal to the x value, just a single x, then they are inverses. If one or both is not equal to x, then they're not inverses. First question, f of x equals 2x plus 8 and g of x equals one-half x minus four. To solve this again, we'll take both compositions, f composition g and also g composition f. If we take the first composition, f composition g, and again from previous sections, we'll start at the right-hand side, we'll take g and we'll plug that into f. So the g function, 1 half x minus 4, we'll plug that in to the x value for f. So f of x would be 2, but instead of x, we'll plug in the g value, which is 1 half x minus 4. And the rest of the f function has a plus 8. Simplifying this, and again if there's inverses, we should end up with a single x. 2 times 1 half would cancel out. So we'll be left with x, 2 times a negative 4 would be negative 8, and the plus 8 left over, negative 8 plus 8 would be 0, or cancel, and we'll be left with x. So the first composition is equal to x, and if we check the second composition, if it's equal to x, they're inverses. If it's not equal to x, then they're not inverses. The second composition, again, will be g composition of f. Again, this time we'll take f, the function, and plug that into the g function. The f function again is 2x plus 8, so we'll plug that function into the x value for the g function. So the g function starts with 1 half. Instead of x, we'll plug in 2x plus 8. And the rest of the g function it has a minus 4. Simplifying, 1 half of 2x would just be x, 1 half of 8 would be 4, and 4 minus 4 would cancel or be 0, and it will be left with x. So since both compositions were x's, the question is determine if their pairs are inverses. The answer would be yes, they're inverses, since both compositions are equal to x. Second question, and last question for this section. 
the two functions f of x equals 3x plus 4 and the second function g of x equals 3x minus 4. And again, we'll take both of these functions, do both compositions, and if they're both equal to the single variable x, they're inverses. If they're not equal to x, then they're not inverses. The first composition again, we can do is f composition of g. And again, we'll start at the right side, take g, and we'll plug that into f. So we'll take 3x minus 4 and plug that into the variable for the x. So we'll have 3, and instead of x, 3x minus 4. And the rest of the f value will have plus 4. Simplifying from here, 3 times 3x would be 9x. And 3 times a negative 4 would be negative 12 plus 4. And simplifying, we'll have 9x minus 8. And again, for these to be inverses, when you do either inverse, it should equal to x, just a single x, and not 9x minus 8. Anytime you get something different than x, the answer to the question would be no, these are not inverses. We don't have to do the second part of the problem, since the first inverse is not x, then they're not inverses.